Hey everybody, welcome to LinuxCast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Drew. Alright, and as you know, as you as you can see if you're watching video, there is still no third person here. Tyler is off doing more fun things than what we would be doing here, apparently. We're living vicariously through him. So Yeah, he's a, he's a young guy. He's got to go out and spread his wings and kill his liver. <laughs> so that, that's what they do. He'll... he'll uh, once he gets to the age of 40, he'll be able to come around again and, and play with his Linux friends. Um, <laughs> anyways, no Tyler tonight, but that's his loss. I'm sure he, he's, uh, he'd he's much rather be talking about NextCloud than being around friends and drunk. I really need to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you want to, as I said last week, Tyler, you want me to stop talking shit? Show up to the podcast. Uh, anyways, we're going to talk about NextCloud tonight specifically. We're going to talk about some good stuff, some bad stuff, things we'd like to see, things we'd like to get into, all that kind of stuff. But before we jump into that, we're going to be talking about what we've done this week in Linux. So, Drew, take us away. What did you do this week? I bought a new shirt. <laughs> It's a Just a Guy Linux shirt that I designed. I also got a new hat, which I will demonstrate right now. It's got the logo. It's fabric. It looks, it looks saucy. Anyway, as far as Linuxy stuff, my job has taken a lot of effort uh, this week, so I don't have a lot to report. And in Florida, we are currently tracking a soon-to-be hurricane, which is spinning up rapidly in the Yucatan Strait. I will say we talked a bit about Plex last week, which led me to the Tidal streaming service. And I guess I, re I never really considered using it before. I mean, I've, I've often thought about using the Am Amazon Music and YouTube Music and Spotify. And for whatever reason, I decided to listen to Tidal Music and compare apples to apples, you know, listen to a Spotify track, listen to a title track and on t and I could hear a difference. And I even asked Matt about it like midweek. I'm like, Matt, have you ever tried this before? And, and they use a compression or a, a lossless type of sound for their tracks. And anyway, I'm doing a trial on Tidal streaming service right now. And while I was doing that, though, and I know this might be interesting to you, Matt, too, because I don't like doing trials with my actual email address. And so we're both Proton Mail users right now. And Proton Pass has a way to use alias accounts. So, for example, if you are, if you click on Proton Pass and you select alias, it shows up as dot dinner one, two, three at passmail.net. And then you just add a title in there. And so you say, you know, let's say title, T-I-D-A-L, okay? Uh, T-I-D-A-L dot dinner one, two, three at passmail.net is this new alias that you can use until you decide, I don't want to use that anymore. And so everything goes into your inbox. It's a very cool feature that I never really like discovered until I thought, yeah, that might be something I might want to take a look at. And so that's about it. When you're, when you're done with the aliases though, in, in, uh, in the pass, uh, proton pass, you just delete it and it's gone and <laughs> nothing goes into the, your inbox anymore, which is really kind of cool. Yeah. I'll definitely so I'm, check I'm considering out. using it in, in place of Bitwarden now. Oh, we really? Yeah. I, I self host Bitwarden, so I don't know if I'd want to move to it, but, I, the alias thing sounds some, like something I could use. My w One of the banks that I use now does alias credit cards. And basically, it allows you to just create your own credit card number uh, that's just like one off yeah. or for one service. Yeah. And that's awesome. Cause you, Virtual then if, card. Yeah. yeah. If the place gets hacked or whatever and they steal your credit card, you just cancel that one virtual card and you don't have to worry about you know your entire thing going under. So it'd be awesome if like Proton Pass and that could be like kind of combined. You just use that for each service, have that its own number. Then it, then when it inevitably gets hacked, you don't have to worry about it. That sounds awesome. Okay. Uh, before I go, uh, Nate, this is how I'm going to fix it, dude. <laughs> Drew, we forgot the claps. <laughs> you know, I kind of thought in the back of my mind we're missing something. And so, yeah. <laughs> Are we going to start all the way over again, though? <laughs> no, 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 no. What we're going to do is we're just going to do the claps now. He can line this part up and okay. then edit around it. 
Uh, hopefully this is this is suitable for you, Nate. <laughs> Otherwise, I was gonna wait till the end. So, Drew, <laughs> <laughs> we're news. This is new to us. We've never done it before. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's like we, we're, we're, it's not as if we've done 190 episodes. <laughs> All right, Drew, do take us away. Do a, do a, do a clap in the middle of the, the episode. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll line those up for you, Nate, if you want me to. <laughs> yeah, I think you're gonna have to, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I completely forgot. I don't know why. I was too busy coming up with jokes about Tyler. I apologize. Nailed it 10 to 10. <laughs> it wasn't close. <laughs> I don't know what you're listening to. <laughs> Even on my end, which usually looks, you, you know, like it's supposed closer. That wasn't close. All right. Anyways, more people got to see the clap. Usually p- people are, who are later don't get to see the clap. So welcome. That's the clap. <laughs> anyways, um, now, now we'll go on to mine. Uh, you can, if you want, you can just leave the clap right in. I'll entertain some people. <laughs> All right. Anyways, so. Personally, I haven't done hardly anything this weekend, Foss, to be honest with you. I've, all I've done is work, like a serious amount of work. I've probably edited close to 500,000 words this week. So my boss decided it was a fantastic idea to give everyone in the, the company December off this year, which I'm very grateful for. But the work still has to be done. So we're doing it in September, October, November, kind of spread out. So it's kind right. of adding stuff to the list of things that we need to do before then so yeah it it has been a very long week that's why i was running late because i had to finish up work and then had no time to eat so i ended up having a fig bar before this anyways the um mostly i've done nothing but i have been messing around with icon packs so i have this I'm apparently stuck on KD Plasma for now, Drew. I don't want to be. I tried Hyperland for about two days, and it is buggy. <laughs> like, I, I I stay away from Hyperland just long enough to know, to forget that it's buggy, and then I go back, and it reminds me that it's buggy. Like, the, the drag and drop between X Wayland and Wayland apps just does not work. Like, it's just completely broken, at least on my system. I don't know about other people. Other people say, oh, it's, oh it works. But anyways, I went back to KD, and I decided, well, I'm going to make my own plasma theme. And I've decided to start start doing that by creating my own icon pack. And first off, I'm not a good designer, so mostly I'm just taking other icons and tweaking them a little bit, which is, you know, whatever. And you know, But I, I've basically started taking the Yaru icon pack from Ubuntu and... Every, every app that I have, I just go through and make one that kind of fits what I'm looking for. And that's what I started off as. And then I'll transition into making an actual Plasma theme. So that should be fun. But other than that, really not that much, to be honest with you. And, and I know that sounds absolutely boring, but... some Oh, you want to know what? There actually was a, something else that I, that I found, that I did. Um, I was going to use this as a, as a nuggy, but I, I don't want to do that now. So the, I don't know if anybody sees this. This is a stream deck. And, you know, it's like basically like a macro pad, if you've never heard of it before. And there is a, it does not work on Linux by default, but other people have put together things. There's, so there's an app called Stream Controller, and it's a, like a, a GTK application that allows you to use this easily on Linux. It is so good. I've been having some issues with the actual, you know, hardware device, but other than that, I've been messing around with that, creating different shortcuts so i have one for volume i have one for like launching all of my applications i have one for a, a couple of macros that i have usually use on the on the keyboard so i did that a little bit this week i did find that i don't use the macros as I, much as i thought so i have to kind of train myself to remember that they're there but i think if i had it on there you know long enough i'd be able to do it but other than that yeah it's cool plus you can put because they had little screens or whatever you can kind of like design them and color code them and stuff so you know kind of right so up my is alley this, is this primarily for streaming like now or well, no well you can't you can so the the stream controller will tie into the websockets plugin for obs so you can change scenes and stuff like that so you can do that but you can ba- basically if you wanted to like run a script like say okay. you wanted to um, um I, I don't know run a backup you know you could you could assign one of these keys oh. to your backup script press it it would run a backup basically you can assign it to whatever command or application or action that you want it to do. Stream Controller has a ton of different pre-built options, and then they have 
basically one that's just like here enter command or whatever and it'll execute the command so if you can't uh, that that's how you launch applications so if you, you if say you're wanting to run the flat pack version of Vivaldi, you do flat pack run okay. com dot Vivaldi or whatever so yeah you can basically put whatever key you want i i only have two that are for the obs and i never remember to use them that, that that's more of a me problem it's just you know think i gotta kind of create that muscle memory in order to do so other than that yeah not much uh in the world of matland this week unfortunately so that is it for our weekend foss we're going to move on to next cloud uh and once again uh drew or uh nate i'm sorry about the clap i just he's, he's in he's in the in, in in the chat and uh i just wanted to apologize again <laughs> i'm sorry uh, anyways moving on to next cloud matt get over it uh, you forget about things all the time you have the memory of a 95 year old Okay. Um, anyways, Nextcloud. So, Drew, you and I are both big users of Nextcloud, and you more than me. We tend to oftentimes troll around in the app store of Nextcloud to find new and cool things. Uh, so, I want to talk about all about that. But before we jump into like the apps and stuff that you know we, we want to talk about and stuff, I just want to talk about in general about how we use Nextcloud. So, why don't you go ahead and go first? You just say how you use Nextcloud. Well, primarily. Nextcloud for me is a replacement for Google Drive. So I just use it like like I would any type of file cloud system. I like other aspects of it, but that is the primary thing is just having a way to synchronize what I have locally uh, with something that is cloud-based. I don't wanna say cloud-based necessarily because I'm using Google, sorry, I'm <laughs> Google. I'm using Nextcloud as an application on my NAS, which is running true NAS scale, okay? So part of, that, part of the beauty of that is that you can add external drives to Nextcloud. So I have a very big, like if I was to use this cloud-based, I might be restricted. But as of right now, I've got 40 terabytes on mm -hmm. my NAS, which I can access using my Nextcloud instance. So file, st file storage, replacing Google Drive, notes are the, t are the two biggest things that I use Nextcloud for. So I'm mostly in the same category, but I've, so I've completely uninstalled Image and I've started to use Nextcloud just for, for, for file storage, but also for all of my photos, both for me and all my family. I just turned on the automatic syncing upload, automatic upload on all everybody's phone, and I no longer have to because probably three times a week I'd get a call from my mom who would say, "Matt, how do I upload this thing from my phone to my computer so I can share it on MeWe or whatever she's on these days?" And I'd have to walk her through it. And we used PCloud for a while, and we didn't. PCloud is basically the same price as every other cloud service is about a hundred dollars a year or you can spend like 500 bucks for a lifetime we never wanted to do that despite them always having a sale so we always was just on the free plan and she was always running out of space so like you said by hosting this on my home lab here in in my uh, office i can have it have as much space as i want it to have and that saves that problem but also i could just have automatic upload of all the photos on every phone and that backs up the important stuff because that's where all of our you know new photos are at so that works out really really well but i've also started using uh the calendar so i've never been a big calendar user i should be a big calendar user but i <laughs> it's one of those things where i kind of have to remind myself to do it matt and, you might want to change your your camera back just sorry i didn't mean to interrupt fine. you <laughs> This is what I'm telling you, Matt. Memory of a 95-year-old. <laughs> i just leave it here. I'm not used to having the solos up, damn it, okay? Usually I don't have them ready to go, and today I do, and I was going to use them, and uh, that's the reason why I don't. <laughs> Anyways, the, the, the calendar is something that I just started using like in the last like week or so, now that I've you know decided I was going to use it, and it is pretty good. I, I like the fact that I can put it on diff different apps. So because it uses the standards for calendar stuff, whatever, CalDAV or whatever it's called, yep, yep. I can put it in like the GNOME calendar app or the KDE calendar app and just use that because the, the, the web UI, and I'll talk more about this later, is not good for anything. Like I, I don't like the web, the web UI of Nextcloud at all. 
I think it's the rounded corners that bug me. They're just too rounded. And they just... <laughs> I know that sounds really fucking stupid, but it's just true. It, it does... It bugs me. I can't help it. So, I, I've been using the, the... The calendar. I can't use the mail because of Proton. Proton doesn't do IMAP and stuff, so... Uh, as far as I know, you wouldn't be, now, you know, it would be interesting to see if there's like an app that would be like Proton Bridge inside of Nextcloud. That'd be, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that actually exists. Um, but yeah, don't use the, 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 uh, mail. And the, the other one that they promote a lot is Talk. I've never really seen a reason to use Talk because Talk doesn't do voice or anything. It's just like Signal or Telegram or whatever, as far as I can tell. Right. That's basically what that is. Or is, do they, do they have voice now? I haven't, no, I thought, I'm kind of under the assumption it's kind of like uh, Google Meet. Like Google Meet would be kind of like, you know, being able to video conference and share your screen and so on and so forth. I I, I have not used it. So I think that's the case, but I don't want to just totally commit to it either. Yeah, so the, every time I, I've clicked into it a couple times and I never see like you can start like a regular conversation and... I don't see anywhere where you can use like, because that's what I thought too was like it had like Jitsi built in or something. But I don't, I don't see any of those that functionality. But like I said, I don't use it, so I don't know. Okay. Overall, though, I've been looking for more reasons lately to use it because somebody said in the chat like that it's that they underutilize the features or they they feel like they underutilize it, and I'm at that point too. It's kind of like I, I I saw DT in the chat, so I have to mention Emacs. It's in the rules. It's kind of like Emacs has all these features and stuff that I just don't use. And, but I feel like I should use them. So every time I have an opportunity to find something that I can use about it, you know, I, I kind of look into it. So, yeah, yeah, that's, that's basically how I use Nextcloud is the, the file syncing and photos is the big one. Like it's so, that automatic upload is so good compared to some of the other apps that I use, because, especially on Android. So like on Android, it just runs in the background. Now on iOS or whatever, uh, you have to open up the app, I believe, in order for it to actually work. That's one thing. That's one area where image kind of was superior because that had like a cron job or something that ran in the background you didn't have to open it up so mr brutal metalhead uh great name says he can uh, you can video chat in next cloud so yeah. there you go so yeah I, I'm, the photo thing is is probably the most impressive thing for me yeah i like it i haven't used it like i probably should because like we've talked about i don't want to keep beating on the proton mail thing but you know with proton drive you can automate it automatically backs up my phone photos to proton drive uh in a special section called photos and it works very very good but the one thing that is good that i you know there's an ai component to using the next cloud photos there's something also an app called we might get this later but something called memories and it installs a lot of like functionality that allows you to like say, oh, I want to look up driver's license, for example, because I take pictures of my driver's license so I don't have to like go find it. Oh man, it's downstairs or something like that. So I just go, oh, it's in my, uh, it's in my either, well, image or next cloud photos or in this Proton drive. And so I'm able to, I'm not able to find it in Proton drive, but if I do a search like that in image, or next cloud photos, I'm able to find what I'm looking for. Okay, so there are themes. I didn't know that you could get themes through the App Store. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just browsing. Oh, uh, you're talking about? I mean, because they have a like a like a breeze that's very KDE like a, a breeze dark theme for. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. They have all that stuff, and there's quite a, there's a couple other ones there as well that uh, that I saw. Um, so that that's that's very interesting for me. The, the because the the web UI is probably my primary complaint about it. It's just I just don't care for the way that it looks. So if I can change that, maybe I'll end up using that more. But you mentioned, you know, go ahead. No, go no, please. Um, the you mentioned having your photos in multiple places. I don't think that that's like an, uh, a bad thing. Like I I have them backed up to Google Photos as well. So the the whole thing we we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, how we like de googling our lives or whatever. I. I'm a cheating cheater who cheats on that kind of stuff because I, I, there's no way I'm going to ever get, be able to get rid of my Google account. Anyways, I'm going to run a YouTube channel even if I want to get rid of the rest of them and if I you know, lost my job or whatever and didn't have to use Docs. But because that's true, I'm gonna ha I, I have photos there. I might as well use it. So I also upload stuff there. So having 
places in multiple places. So if the home lab dies and the, the photos go away, I also have them on Google Photos. I, I have uh, the vast majority of the ones that are on my phone up on iCloud. So having them in multiple places, I think, is a, is a good thing. So let's uh, move on then a little bit and talk about some of the apps that we, we've we discovered. You, you've used a few of them for Nuggies of the Week, so we can talk about those. Sure. And, and we can talk about some of the things that we've kind of just seen along the way, even if we don't use them. So why don't you uh, take us away? I will try to steer towards the ones that I actually use, but there are a bunch that I have written down just as a point of interest. As far as files, which I've talked about before, I use the, I I might not be able to pronounce it correctly. I'm going to say Calabra, if that's the right way to, uh, to say that, but Calabra online, I know that there is an only office document ability as well, but I use the Collabora. I set it up on my, uh, on my server to, to use the Collabora online documents. That's a very good, and I, you know, it's a very good feature in that you can use it for documents and spreadsheets and presentations and so on and so forth. So that's the very first thing I do that I will recommend is, you know, getting a collaborative document software built into your next cloud instance. Yeah, that's a good, I don't, because of the fucking Google Docs thing, I, I, I probably don't, I don't have a really like useful, because I don't have, other than you, I don't, and I think Nate, I think you're like the only three next cloud users that I know like personally. So our collaboration, you know, now I think about it, Drew, we, if we'd ever decided we weren't going to use the uh, the GitHub repo for our show notes, we could use something like that for on, on next cloud. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, but, for sure. Yeah, yeah, so that, that'd be interesting because then we could go in there and like ha- actually have, you know, collaboration and stuff instead of having yeah. to deal with uh, get conflicts and stuff, which happens every once in a while. So the ones that I'm I'm looking at lately have all been doing going to do with um, like external sites and the, the external storage, external storage thing that right. you, you plug in. So what I've been trying to do because I have the I have two two terabyte NVMEs in my home lab a one terabyte rush drive and then attached via usb i have three big boys like you know multiple terabytes and stuff so what i've been working on is getting next cloud so it will work straight off from uh, those hard drives instead of using it through nfs which is what it had been doing so that way it has more storage that way and it's faster because if you run through nfs it is slow Okay. I guess like super slow. Um, now that's that's not a Nextcloud thing. That's an NFS thing. NFS NFS is just slow. So yeah, that's that's the one I would point people towards is the external storage plugin app or whatever they want to call it. It's great. I mean, I've been using that for a long time, and the reason why is because, like I said before, I'm using I'm using TrueNAS Scale for my NAS, and so I actually set up. <laughs> you're gonna love this, Matt. Samba directories on my TrueNAS scale, and I'm connecting to it. This is completely two separate machines. Completely, I'm connecting to it in you know within the network, but still, it's a Samba share called Documents uh, on my TrueNAS scale. There's another one that's called Notes, and another one called Pictures. And so I have separated out these these external storage to Samba drives that happen to be reside on my true NAS scale, completely separate from my uh, next cloud instance. So yeah, external storage, definitely a, a, a very good way to, ex, you know, extend your next cloud. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably should have said that, that you pointed me towards that. that was, so no, no. I, I definitely yeah. st- stole yours or one of yours. Um, but that's, that's great. The, um, so technically it's your turn to, to go next. Cause that was, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I use, Nextcloud bookmarks probably the most. The, well, the next most, I guess, is my, you know, if I had to like prioritize these. Nextcloud bookmarks is something that I have really, really enjoyed. And like I mentioned it before, as a, I believe it was a nuggy of the week, actually. Nextcloud bookmarks in conjunction with a, a Firefox plugin called Flocus, F L O C C U S, okay? And that way I can just like, oh, I'm just going to save that. And it will automatically find its way into my NextCloud bookmarks, which I can then share with somebody else. 
And I, and I used the example last time that my wife can then look at these particular, this particular folder of bookmarks that I have shared so that she can take a look and, and make notes and edit them and so on and so forth. It's a very good feature. If you are someone that wants to have a cloud-based bookmark, this could be really, really good for you, especially in a group setting. So bookmarks on Nextcloud, excellent. And again, Flockus, which is a very good uh, plugin. Okay, so I'm now moving into ones that I don't use or haven't started using yet, but there's one called Element for Nextcloud that I have installed. And I don't know if anybody knew this, but there is a matrix server for the Linux cast. Uh, I don't use it. There's um, people on there, and I'm sure the moderation is great. I mean, <laughs> it's, just, it's just fantastic. But Element is a is a is a matrix client, and there, you can actually use it within Nextcloud, and it looks like it works fairly well. I've, I've just been playing around with it for a little while, so and by a little while, I mean like ten minutes. So, okay. but it does have four and a half stars on there, so the uh, it looks. Good and also looks exactly like Element if you were to download the, th the thing. So if you use the web in integration or whatever with the web UI, and you want to make add more features to it, that's probably one that I'd use. At least then I could check in on the matrix matrix server every once in a while. So th there's another one. Okay. Drew? Yeah. So I really like. There's a couple of things that, and we just talked about this a little bit as far as theming is concerned. Okay. There are themes that you can use. Uh, the Breeze Dark is kind of like the KDE Breeze Dark. So if you are a KDE user and you want to swap, sw you know, make your make your Nextcloud instance look like the rest of your desktop, that's a really <laughs> cool way to do it. If you're using, especially if you're using Breeze Dark. But in addition to that, there is something called Custom Menu. Okay, and I really like this because, you know, generally if you have seen Nextcloud, you see that the uh, menu is across the top, but having custom menu gives you a lot more control. And this is an app, custom menu app, that you have a lot more control over what is in the menu. It even adds an additional icon in the left corner of your of your screen of your you know of your Nextcloud instance, and it has basically a way a pop out so that you can see a list of your installed applications and you can you know if for me i actually remove the horizontal navigation from the top of the screen and just use that pop out custom menu that you can control it's a very good application if you are wanting to massage your navigation for nextcloud oh that's awesome drew i'm definitely going to install that as I've said multiple times now, the, the UI, that's probably definitely helped a little bit. This will definitely, I think you'll like this, Matt, quite a bit, actually. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, so my next one is another one that I've used only once, and that's because you really only ever have to use it once. And it's called, it's called uh, I forgot the name of it. It's called Google Synchronization something or the other. <laughs> Sorry. It's called Google Synchronization. That's what it's called. I had it right. Anyways, the basically what it does is it connects via OAuth. Now, you do have to set OAuth up in the background. Uh, it, there's no UI for it. But once you set it up, it allows you to synchronize your contacts and your calendars and all sorts of stuff from your Google account into Nextcloud, and you don't have to do all that stuff manually. It is really good, and it just... I mean, it, it, it's the lazy man's dream, especially if, you're use, if you use, like, Google Calendar before. Now... It's not the only way to do this. Like, if you don't want to install the app, you could just use CalDAV because Google Google Calendar does support that. You can just put that into Google to Nextcloud Calendar. But this just takes all of the data, right? And what I really liked for was the contact information. Even though I'm not going to use the the mail client for, on Nextcloud, I still like to have a backup of my contacts somewhere where I own them. Uh, and it's that's smart. And and I switch email clients so often that I. I've lost so many contacts over the years. It's just stupid. So it's way easier to make sure that I have it in multiple places. There's no way I'm going to lose it. And by having it on Nextcloud, you can easily synchronize that to your devices. So you, once you have, you've synchronized your stuff from Google to Nextcloud, Nextcloud then goes on your phone and you can take your contacts from Nextcloud and put them on your phone if you need to, right? If you don't have them all in one place. So 
that is uh, it's a great feature and it's, it's definitely like once you have the Google synchronization thing set up you won't you'll never use it again you can just uninstall it because the, the data is there but yeah that it, it's it's fantastic it's, it's very good anyways drew your next one there's a feature that and again while I talk while I'm talking about theming I might as well like double down again <laughs> so there's something an application that you can install that's called custom CSS okay and so if you want to change and really massage the color scheme in your next cloud instance, this might be another thing that you might want to consider, Matt. There's a custom CSS uh, application that runs and you'll find it, you know, if, once you install it, it actually becomes part of your, it's called administrative theming, the theming in your settings, okay? So in your theming in settings, there is a custom, there, there's automatically now a custom CSS box that you can go into and massage and say, okay, I want this particular color for, you know, your your cardboard or your border or things like that. So, or your dashboard, that would be another thing that you would want to maybe change the color of. So custom CSS, having a different theme and the custom menu, all applications, very good if you want to really massage your UI. That's cool. Uh, another one that I have to download, but I'm not good at CSS. But I'll have to. I wonder if there's like um, I wonder if people have shared theirs. That'd be cool. A couple. I've seen two. Okay, I've seen two. One was a Dracula theme, mm. Um, mm. and the other one was a dark GitHub theme. Those were the two that I've seen. If someone would make me a Grubbox theme, I yeah. will probably pay money for it. <laughs> okay. All right. So my next one is one that I didn't actually end up using because I couldn't, I, I still, I've still been too busy to mess around with the download size setting thing that I need to do. Uh, Drew sent me a, a link on how to do it. I haven't managed to actually go through and do it yet. But while Nate and I were messing around with that, one of the things that I considered was uploading everything in a compressed .zip file, right? And what I thought would, you know, would be interesting to be able to do would be able to extract it. And there's actually an application called Extract that you can extract compressed files right there in, in Nextcloud. You don't have to download them. So you can, if you never want to see the Nextcloud app on your, on your uh, computer and you just want to do everything in the web UI, and, but you still find yourself in a situation where you have to extract like a tar, tarball or a .zip, the extract app will allow you to do that very easily. Now, it is not a Nextcloud app. It's a it's a third party app, or whatever. So it is untrusted, but that's not that big a deal. So, but it, it, I use it. I think twice while I was messing around with with Nate's stuff. I don't think I even ever even told Nate that I was going to try it because it didn't. It just didn't work. And that wasn't the extract thing. It was the just file size. Even the zip file was too big. Um, so there you go. Anyways, that's extract. Just very simple. You know probably only use it every you know once in a while but it, it the fact that you can do that in your browser kind of cool anyways uh drew your next one there is a few things uh that we've already talked about as far as calendaring and contacts and so on matt and i both use an rss feed called what is it i just lost my train of thought fresh rss fresh rss okay but there is a very good news application within nextcloud so to do RSS feeds, you can manage everything basically within Nextcloud and having news as an RSS feed reader uh, is something that I don't do, but I can do it is this point. And if I was actually in the Nextcloud interface more and more, as opposed to just kind of using it from the outside looking in, I would probably use it. And I think that we're kind of, we kind of are, if you are someone that likes to do or use RSS, you might as well give it a shot. Nextcloud RSS, or sorry, Nextcloud News application can be something that you may want to use since you're going to be self-hosting it anyway. Yeah, I'm writing all these ones down because all the ones you've said so far are money. Um, that's awesome. I don't know that I'd use it because I could just use the fresh RSS no, I, thing. But, I think um, it's probably more robust, Matt. That's and you know that's the po the point for being able to integrate it. Maybe you will say, oh yeah, this is simplistic. Maybe I need a little bit something more. And then if that's the case, you might want to then like jump over to fresh RSS where it has feature, it's very feature rich. But if you're just doing simple things, maybe uh, maybe the uh, next cloud news is something that you might want to take a, a gander at. I wonder how it would look because one of the things that's happening is that I use an app on my phone called Reader Classic and the developer just came out with a new version, which is a subscription service and doesn't support fresh RSS. It's 
the dumbest okay. thing. And I'm, I'm anticipating the one that I'm using now to eventually be just never updated again. So I wonder how this app would work like in the next cloud app. You may be even have be able to have a, a native iOS app for NextCloud News. There might be one that's already there. I don't know. Maybe. I'll have to give that a look. All right. So my next one is another one that I use, but not as often as I want to. So it's called Google Docs Redirect. And basically what this is, is if you have, for whatever reason you've if you were like a previous Google Drive user, all of your Google Docs are actually saved in Google Drive. and You probably have those somewhere. And if you have transitioned over from Google Drive into NextCloud and all that stuff is in NextCloud, you probably have all of your Google Docs there. So you can go into that and using this application to click on your Google Docs links inside of NextCloud. And it'll just basically open Google Docs for you which is pretty cool if you, you have that need. Uh, I, I don't use it because I just still have Google Drive sitting around because I haven't gotten rid of that because of work. But I have had the situation where a couple times I had something that was more personal, not work-related, that I wanted to open up in Google Sheets, the thing that I track all of my reading in and the thing that I tra track all of my writing in. Both of those I save now on NextCloud and I can save them uh, via Google Docs. Now, it's a convoluted mess because it doesn't, like, once you open them up in Google Drive, you still have to save them back to NextCloud, and there's no automatic way to do that. Uh, but this at least allows you to open up in Google Docs if you want to. So the, the Google integration in NextCloud is actually pretty robust once you add in a whole bunch of these applications, and that's pretty neat. If, if you can't pry yourself away from Google, you can at least get these things working together at least a little bit, you know, which is nice. All right. Drew, if you have an next one. Sure. We talked about things that we must have last week, you know, and one of the things that you said was Todoist. And there is a app for NextCloud called Tasks. Okay. Now I have not used this, but from my understanding, it's it works well with other <laughs> other pieces of software. For example, if you set up tasks in NextCloud, you can use the GNOME application called Endeavor on Linux so that you can, you can actually connect with your uh, NextCloud tasks with using Endeavor, not the OS guys, the GNOME application, okay? The other thing is like if you are a, an Android user, there's something called Open Tasks and that would allow you to connect to your NextCloud instance. If you're an Apple user or an iOS user, Apple, it will actually will sync with Apple Reminder. And so that is something that you may wanna take a look at. Also, most of you will notice if you are a NextCloud user, I don't know, I, I would be really curious to know what percentage, even in the chat right now, of people are actually using NextCloud. There's the NextCloud deck, okay? And you can actually, once you log in, to your NextCloud instance, there's the deck, and your task manager can be right there on your NextCloud deck. So there's three different ways between Endeavor and two mobile applications, and then your NextCloud deck. Okay, so I doubt that it does the native language recognition or whatever that Todoist does, but I maybe will overlook that because it's... It, it, the fact that well, it's an open source project, you know, and it, that it syncs with the reminders thing. That's free. That, that's that's awesome because that app is really good. And I find myself putting things in there and then forgetting about it because I used to do it. So if I were to train myself to use the reminders app, especially seeing as how I'm apparently stuck on iOS forever, I could find myself doing that. And that, that I maybe will. Yeah, that's good. I, I literally am sitting here making notes. Drew. <laughs> Every single, for at least four of the ones that you've mentioned, I've written down. I will, I will, I will put this on some. I'll put it in the show notes, guys. If you want a list of everything that I'm talking about, I actually have two markdown files that I'm looking at that I'm using as notes. I will make those available to you if you are interested. We do just have to pause for just a second to note that Drew's way more organized about this than I am. I'm literally just going through the the list of my apps on Nextcloud. That's my level of preparation. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So my next one is one that I don't have installed and I have never used because I don't use LibreSign. Whenever, anytime I have to electronically sign something, I have to use DocuSign because that's just what everybody uses. But if you do self-host LibreSign, which is basically the self-hosted version of DocuSign, 
Nextcloud does have an integrated an app integration for LibreSign, and uh, the problem is like nobody uses it. Like, like that, that's the biggest issue. Like everyone, like every time you get something from work and you have to electronically sign it, it's always DocuSign. I, I wish more people would use LibreSign because I've, I've tried it a couple times just you know on my own, and it, it's really good. But yeah, anyways, LibreSign. There is an app for LibreSign inside of okay. Nextcloud. So cool. if, if you get, especially if you use like the the if you use the mail client. I think, and I'm not, I'm not sure about this because, like I said, I haven't used it inside of Nextcloud. But I think what it will do is, if you you have a LibreSign link that comes to you through email, it will open up right inside of the Libre, Libre the LibreSign, LibreSign thing, uh, right inside of Nextcloud. So yeah, I think that that's awesome. All right, Drew, your next one. So okay, we have talked a lot about potential Google Doc replacements, including, you know, like I said before between calendaring and contacts and tasks and so on. One thing that people might not know about Nextcloud is they have a forms builder, okay? So if you want to like, cause people that use the Google forms all the time to, you know, let's just use Discord as a way to, you, you might want a potential, one of those guys called that like admin, okay? A potential admin to come in and fill out a form, okay? And some people will use Google Docs for that or Google Forms for that. You can use Nextcloud for the exact same thing where it will collect the data and you'll be able to like retrieve it and see it. And it's basically a lightweight email client that lets you, that lets you manage these mails after people fill out a form. You don't have to have like a you don't have to have like a Nextcloud account. You can just, uh, as a Nextcloud user, you can just make it public and then people will then be able to go out and look at that form, fill it out, and then as the admin for that form, be able to get that data. Oh, that's cool. So my next one is another one that I've never used because I don't use Drop, Drop, Dropbox, but I saw that it was in there. So there is something called Dropbox integration. The actual name is just called... File Drop. Oh, no, there's one called Dropbox Integrations. Which oh, is, oh okay. Right. And basically what this will do is you connect via OAuth again, and it will allow you to synchronize your Dropbox files with Nextcloud. Now, I, it feels to me like there'd probably be an easier way to do this. Just have Dropbox and Nextcloud installed on your computer and f swap them over that way. That way you only have to – that way you deal with the file transfer speeds that are associated with your computer instead of the internet. But if for whatever reason you're like on – say you're on vacation you have to do this or whatever and you have stuff from Dropbox you really want to put in your your Nextcloud or whatever, whatever situation you're in. Like, I don't know why you want to do this in, on vacation. I don't know. <laughs> you're just sitting there camping. Oh, I'm going to do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. But anyways, if you're in that situation where you want to transfer your Dropbox files to Nextcloud, th this is the way to do it. Now, I don't think, though, that this is cool, as cool as it could be at least. It would be cool is if it just gave you a Dropbox folder inside of your Nextcloud that stayed up to sync. You know what I mean? Like, like what you could, if you, for whatever reason, you had to use both, you'd always have your Dropbox files inside of your Nextcloud if you wanted to. Now, what you probably could do is just put your Dropbox directory that you use with the Dropbox app inside of your Nextcloud. Then it would synchronize with Nextcloud. So that's probably one way to get around this if you don't want to use the, the actual application. But if you use the web UI, this would uh, be something that you could use. So that's my next one. Uh, Drew, your next one. Okay, so there's something called external sites. Uh, it's an application that you can use and install on Nextcloud. The goal of that is to add links to external websites directly into your dashboard. So you're basically creating like a hub for online resources and tools. And so let's just say as YouTube content creators, we want to use a one of these external sites to go to our YouTube studio for example, or something like that. I, can, I actually added my justaguylinux.com website. And what it does is it actually shows everything in an iframe. So that you don't actually have to leave or have another tab open if you have your Nextcloud instance open and just select your external sites. It actually will be right there in your Nextcloud and you don't have to go anywhere. Some people will actually use it, I think, more for... I don't know, forms and, and content that you might want to just be able to quickly pull up. So that's a really good way to just keep everything within Nextcloud. Okay, Drew, how many more do you have? I got two, I think, or three, two or three. 
Okay, because I can easily, I, I have a couple more that I, I can share as well. So the, the next one that I w- want to share is called Maps. If you wanted to have, uh, basically, it, I believe it uses open street maps. I'm not sure about that. Definitely, I don't think it uses Google. But any, anyways, the if you just want to have like, ma- like a map quest thing inside of Nextcloud, this will allow you to do that. I don't think that it works on mobile, which is where it would work, would look really cool. But on the, the desktop, it looks really nice. And you can just basically find whatever you'd find on a map. So if you don't want to use Google Maps, but you don't need like directions, like uh, step-by-step directions on your mobile, this would work well in the in the in the browser. So Maps is my next one. Drew, your next one. There is social media integration. Just so you know, there's something called like a like a Twitter Twitter integration. If you I don't use Twitter very much, so it's not something that I would do, but. If you are a big Twitter uh, user, they have like a Twitter integration and they also have Mastodon integration, which I'm probably more likely to use. So you can use, these are applications that you can just install in Nextcloud and you can see it right right as you log in and say, oh, look at that. There's there's something I need to address on Mastodon and it's right there. So just a couple that I'm going to mention that I've seen but never used. So if just like the Dropbox one, there's actually ones for OneDrive and Mega and uh, a couple others that I've seen. So if you use other platforms for hosting files and you're looking for transition to transition over and for whatever reason you don't want to use the application on your computer to do it could have these applications there's probably an application here that allow you to synchronize them you know, between your old service and your new service um, i also saw the uh, uh, and i'm only mentioning this now because they're related to, so- to other things drew you mentioned the social media stuff there's also PeerTube, and i've seen notion and i saw a couple others so there's quite a few different social networks slash productivity apps that kind of have the integration. I'm not sure how any of them really work all that, you know, so your mileage may vary, but it's really cool that all the, these have built in inter- integration for some of these services, which is you can just pop them on your dashboard if you wanted to. Right. So uh, Drew, your next one. Okay. I, I'm going to say the last one because I really think we should talk about notes a little bit more on this mm-hmm. because yep. th- this is something that I think people would be most likely to use. But my last one as an application is called collectives. If you are a project, did you already mention this? Did I say this? Did I, am I double, di- um, no, du- I don't think double so. dipping here? Okay. Collectives, it allows you to create a collaborative knowledge base and share and be able to organize information into collections, making it easier for multiple people to share documentation and resources in a very structured way. It is a very powerful tool that I have not used. I I will say that I have not used it, but I look at it and I've seen a couple guys do videos on it. Collectives is is very interesting to me, even though I, I can't figure out how I'm going to use it, but it's something that uh, that's really cool. It's a knowledge base, guys. It's a knowledge base type thing and a project tracker. So there you go. Cool. Yeah, it some kind of sounds like a, like a replacement for like Notion because Notion is also the knowledge base or Obsidian or something like that. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like very knowledge basey. My last one is something called RePod. And again, another one that I haven't used, but looks like it might be interesting it is basically allows you to subscribe and manage and listen to podcasts in Nextcloud. so if, if you i don't i don't believe the podcasts are self-hosted so i'm not sure where it sources its podcasts from but still something interesting if you want to use Nextcloud for everything okay so you're right drew i do want to talk about notes we can do that next and then the last thing i want to talk about is things that uh, we wish Nextcloud was better at I have a couple of those things. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and talk about notes. So both you and I use Nextcloud to synchronize notes. One of the things I'm most impressed with is how many things that Nextcloud is kind of integrated with. So there's a whole bunch of third-party apps that you can use for, for notes and stuff, which is really cool. So that's where I'll start off on that. So why don't you take us in the direction you wanted to go with on notes? Well, I, I typically, like I said before, I use I use Genie for just about everything. So if I'm going to do a note in a markdown type of note, then I will just like use Genie to either create or make the note in a specific folder. And then it automatically using the Nextcloud sync tool, it just up automatically updates everything. And so it all just kind of works together. I don't use a dedicated thing like you do, Matt. And I think that's probably a better use case. But I will say that 
I have used something called QuillPad on my phone for notes, for lists, I should say it that way, because the Nextcloud notes application on Android is very good. I just don't use it because I don't get into long, like form typing or anything on a phone. I just can't do it. I'll, I'll like wait until I get home or something like that. But on QuillPad, it's kind of like that Google Keep replacement that you can use very like simply. And I, I'll look at lists that are in my uh, Nextcloud notes. And that's how I would use it as a mobile user. But other than that, I just synchronize folders and I use Genie as my text editor to make all my notes. So for me, I still use IOTIS primarily for my notes. That's really cool. Yeah, it's it's a great application. Like it, it hasn't let me down. And it's it's very much... It has just enough organization where I can organize stuff, but it's also very quick to take notes so I can just pop it. I have it open all the time and just go in there and either see the note that I need to look at or create a note or whatever. And then on my mobile phone, I do use the Nextcloud app, the Nextcloud notes app for, for notes. It's not very good on iOS, to be honest with you. It feels like a web wrapper a lot of times, but it works well enough that I can use it. Now, what's interesting, because you mentioned earlier with one of the things you were talking about how there's Nextcloud tasks tie into reminders. I wonder if there's a way to tie Apple Notes into Nextcloud. That'd be freaking sweet. I don't think there probably is because I probably would have heard about it. But if there is, that'd be awesome because then the, the Apple Notes app is very good. But my problem with it is like it's very siloed into iCloud and I'm not finding a way to use iCloud on my computer. I don't want it to touch my computer. It'd be horrible. So it'd be interesting to see if there is a way to tie that into NextCloud. I don't know if there is or not. If anybody knows how you would do that, you know, just hit me up. But other than that, I do use the NextCloud Notes on there and then I just synchronize those things. But I also, because I'm a big Vim guy, I have a uh, an alias that I can just type in a uh, note and it will create a new note inside of my next cloud directory uh, and then that will upload there. I don't use that I as do the same thing. That's so weird. I do the same thing. I don't I have that as... function. I I made a script that does that. So yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, I just did a function inside of my bash rc that does it, right? Okay. So the which so basically the same thing. The thing is I just don't use it as often as I probably do because I'm so used. I gotten I've gotten so used to using IOTA and, and the the mobile app. Yeah. But every once in a while I'll be I'll be messing around in the terminal and like oh I need to write down this. I've also created an alias for. I have like a a, a holding box. It's just basically a directory that doesn't exist inside of my documentation repo. It, it, it's in the git ignore, and I can use this function to create a a new basically documentation docu- document inside of there that doesn't get shown to anybody. So I can just put in everything as I go through to make new documentation inside of this note thing. And then it will eventually, uh, I can put it where it goes a- after I'm done with it. And that way I can kind of like, it, I use it kind of like a scratch pad. So put, if I, you know, I have a command or whatever, I can just go pop it into there and then eventually I write it up so it's, that it's nice. I do use... All, so all of my documentation, it is its own repository, but I also have it in my next cloud directory so that it's in both places. Okay. That way, if I want to get on my phone and create documentation for whatever reason or if I need to see it, you know, I can just go into next cloud notes. All of my documentation that I've been creating oh, really is in there. And that way I can, you know, I, I can – so – what I've used it a couple times for is when I'm in a TTY that doesn't have uh, you know access to my documentation repo, I can get on my phone, get to my documentation repo or documentation folder easily through Nextcloud. It looks and is more functional than I would if I was going to a, Git, a GitLab repo. So I can control text size and whatever. It's not a browser window, in other words. I can read all that stuff on my phone and do whatever it is I need to do on the, the screen. I don't have to worry about having to, you know, get clone my documentation repo just to see what I need to do. So I've, I've done that a couple times uh, for setting up things like Proxmox and stuff like that, which which was really nice. So, uh, yeah, notes on NextCloud, since you basically turned me on to this, was, was it are just really good. And it's not even that the notes themselves are really good. It's just that the it, it, it takes the worry out of synchronization because the – problem with the synchronization stuff is that every app does its own synchronization stuff so there's no way for me to take 
you know, if I'm using Obsidian or whatever, everything there is just in Obsidian, right? If I'm using their sync, it's going to be synchronized to Obsidian. It's never going anywhere else. Now, there's obviously ways you can, you know, take that other places if you wanted to work around that. But by having it all in Nextcloud, I can use whatever app that I want. If I if I get sick of IOTIS, I can go to something else. So that that's basically what I like about it. Is that it takes the entire worry out about synchronization and it's just really good okay yeah <laughs> I'm, all, yeah. I'm all i'm 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 just nodding in agreement with everything you're saying <laughs> matt got it all right okay so i have three things that i want to talk about that are not so good so i don't i don't know if you have any of these as well but i'll go first uh, the, the the first one that just drives me bonkers is the search on the web on the web it, the, the the search that's is fair. That's so fair bad fair. and and it's not even – it does okay, okay if you're searching for your stuff. Like if you're searching through your files, it will usually find what you're looking for. But we just sat here for 40 minutes or whatever, Drew, and went through all of these applications. If you want to find an application uh, through search, you can't do it. Like it says you can do it, but it doesn't work. Like I've never actually seen it come up with an application result. Like, like I searched I, – I've been searching for – uh, an AWS integration, right? Because I, I really like some a AWS integration inside Nextcloud. That'd be really freaking cool so that I can have an, like an object storage S3 bucket just attached to Nextcloud. I can pop stuff into if I wanted to. As far as I can tell, that doesn't exist. But I, it, it may very well exist, but I can't find it because the search is so atrociously bad for apps at least. So yeah, that's that's my biggest one is the search is just not good. No, I, I, I can't agree more about that. I, one of the things that I have not looked at, I mean, there's an entire section in your apps store. I'm going to call it the app store that has to do with search. And I've not used, I haven't even touched it. You know, you, you, you know, you look under the featured apps and one of the things is search. And I just have never actually like taken the time and, or opportunity to look at any of the applications. There, there's something called a full text search. And there's a bookmark search and, it, and so on and so forth. So I will I will say that I probably and actually there's a search page. Holy crap! Okay, so I I don't know how to rectify that, but I probably I prob I probably would that would probably be my th my top one too. I, I was trying to think of one that that was like more pressing, but that's probably the one that I would put out there first as well. And I know that you I know that you have like reservations with the way the interface looks. But I think that once you start looking at some of the apps that we were talking about earlier, as far as like custom menus and so on, so on, you might be a lot happier with it. Even, even if you actually, even if you don't use it every day, because it sounds like you're kind of like working, you know, using it on the periphery, you know, it's just like, it's there, but I'm using IOTIS and it's there and I'm using it some, with something else. So but there is, there are features there. And I will say that I agree with you. I think that they could probably do a little bit better in terms of the UI experience uh, without having to like go and like finagle and add stuff and so on and so forth. That would be, that would probably be my second thing is make it look prettier, you know? Yeah. Hire a designer or something that would, you know, make it just look, look good. Cause there's, there's things in there that just really bug me about it. So if you're in a place where there's a scroll bar and it's inside of the, the obnoxiously rounded corners, the, the scroll bar like cuts itself off and it just looks bad. Now, it doesn't affect the functionality at all. Every time I make a video about something and then I say that, you know, I can't use this because the UI is bad or just looks bad, people, you know, mock me like, what does that matter as long as it works? That That's true, 100%. Like, if it, functionality is way more important than UI, but but... Nextcloud has the functionality down outside of the search thing. Uh, and, you know, UI should be the next thing, but I don't think it's going to be. I, AI is their next thing, right? Like, like that's that's their next their next play. Uh, so the next one that I have, I have lack of AWS as one. I would really like some AWS support, but I mentioned that. The uh, other one that I really want to talk about is the, the desktop client. Um, now, it works, again, fine. But the actual application part, it, it's 100% taskbar based. So you, 
first off, you have to have a task uh, like a system tray in order to, for it to work. Uh, and not all desktop environments actually have that these days. And, and if you're a window manager, you kind of have to create your own, right? And so if you want to get to next cloud, you have to have that. But also, the, it, they have it set up so it's fucking stupid. In order for it to stay in focus, if, if, if you open it up and then use it and then you leave focus, like you move your mouse somewhere else, it disappears. Like, why? That's just the dumbest thing. Also, I don't know if they're using like an old version of QT or an old version of GTK. I don't know what they're actually using. Whatever they're using, a lot of times, if you're using a dark theme inside of Plasma, either Plasma or Gnome, I can't remember which one. Right now, it seems to be working fine, but it's very hit or miss. A lot of times, like it's like black text on black background, and it's unreadable. So the, the next cloud desktop client is, it needs... Work. I changed my mind. That is the absolute word. <laughs> I'm going to move <laughs> off of search and make that my my top must have because as a tiling window manager, it freaking sucks. And that's a fact. I don't like using the app image anyway. You know, I don't like it. it I would prefer a more native solution. You know, obviously I do have a I do have a task bar and I have a sys tray for my DWM that I'm using right now. And it does show up, but man, it sucks. I mean, once it's set up, then it's fine, and I don't have to touch it too much. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like that at all. I, I don't like that one little bit. I wish I could add another one, Matt, but I just don't have any. So Th that's fine. That's fine. It just they just need to make an app. Just stop with the stupid system tray stuff. Integrate like you can have the integration, but actually make an app. Like, like that, that definitely has to be on their to-do list because it, it would be so much easier. You just go to your system menu or open up Brophy or whatever and say next cloud and the app pops up. But basically now what you do is you go in and Brophy launch next cloud. It shows up in your system tray. And if you, first off, if you're the, like a first time user, you're like, where's my app, right? Like it didn't even yeah. show up, especially if you're like Gnome that doesn't have a system tray out of the box. Or if you're on a window manager that doesn't usually have a system tray out of the box, you might just think that it's broken. It's not even there. Like, and the thing is like other file synchronization services have this solved and they do something similarly stupid where it's a system tray thing. Like Dropbox does that too. There's no application, but they still have a pop-up whatever that starts up when you open the application, like there's a pop-up or something, or it opens up the file manager or something. It does something to indicate that it's actually open. Uh, Nextcloud just needs some serious work in, in there. And that was my last one was the, was the the app as well. So even, even with our like must, we, we, you know, the things that we would really like to see Nextcloud do, oh my God, is it good software? I mean, my God, it is unbelievably good and it allows us to get off of some of the Google stuff that we've been using for the last decade. You know, it, it allows us to, to really have control and ownership over our data and significantly more happy with, <laughs> with this particular solution than anything else I've done in a, in a long time in terms of open source software. Yeah. So, We've talked about this before on the podcast, Drew, that there are pillars. So so almost almost universally, including Linux itself, open source is a, is, is a general consumer failure, right? Like, 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 and I say that like hardly anybody uses or cares about open source in the brand the grand scheme of things. But there are pillars where that's not the case. So things like OBS is a big one. Blender is a big one. But Nextcloud is also right up there as one of those things where we can hold this up and say this thing is as good as basically any pro thing proprietary that you can find right and there's not like there's so little we can we, we we can't point to gimp and say this is as good as photoshop it's not uh we can't point to firefox even really and say this is as good as chrome i mean some people would say that it is as good as chrome but you know it it, it whatever uh, there's so many things like that where we can't point to and say that, the, you know, this open source solution is as good as its proprietary alternative. But Nextcloud is, and in, all, in, in a lot of cases, it's actually better than what Google offers because it's so extendable. I mean, I mean you, yes, there are plugins and stuff for Google Docs and whatever, and all, you can extend Google products in some ways. But Drew and I just talked for about an hour about applications that we found interesting that we either use or, or you know, are interested in or whatever. We barely scraped the surface of applications that are available. 
and if they had search functionality that actually worked, you'd be able to discover them better. But if you go splunking into the application store or whatever they want to call it, you can find probably a thousand applications that do all sorts of different things, have integrations for all sorts of different services, lots of stuff that we didn't mention. And that's awesome. I mean, the, 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 you can do so much with it, even more than what it does out of the box. And that it ha has always been mightily impressive for me. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Drew. It's so good. And it's astonishingly easy to use. Uh, actually, there is one other thing that I want to talk about, Drew, the ease of use thing. It's easy for me and you to use because we know how to self-host it. And, and there are <laughs> very obscure places where you can go and say, hey, I would like a next cloud thing. But if it really wanted to be mainstream, the thing that I have to do is offer this as a service for themselves. Like you say, just pay a, a, a fee and you, then you have next cloud. Uh, and you don't have to worry about having hardware to do it or the internet to do it or renting a Linode or knowing how to, to set it up. You just go buy a next the next cloud service and you'd have it. They need that. And while yes, there's third party services that exist, they're so obscure and they bury them on their website and half of them don't That's work. Yeah. It's just it'd be so good if they had like a, a way to just go get next cloud where you didn't have to worry about the setup or the hosting or whatever. It would be more way way more popular than it is right now if there was it was easy to do. It, it's kind of similar to like a WordPress. Like Word I give WordPress a lot of shit for self-hosting and stuff like that. But you can, if you don't want to self-host it, go to wordpress.com and have the exact same functionality. Yes, it's not open source anymore. Uh, and yes, you have to pay if you want to, you know, actually use a lot of the features. But there's no reason why NextCloud couldn't do the same thing. Like if you want to, it'd be a, a money opportunity for them to gain in you know, revenue or whatever to have this thing set up so you can just go get it if you wanted to, to do it that way and you'd still be able to go self-host if you wanted to but you'd have the option i think that would uh, in increase its you know reach a thousand fold so just so just so, i mean let, let me just put this out there if you are looking at maybe self-hosting and using nextcloud and you are someone who let's just use linode as the example if you use the Ubuntu server, it is a snap, okay? It's a snap and it will continue to self-update. And that would be something that I think a lot of people would be able to do easily. So just, just if, if that is the case and you say, oh dude, I wanna try this next cloud. I don't know that I have the hardware. I don't know that, just do a Linode or, or something like that. And if you're using Ubuntu server, Use the snap to install Nextcloud and see if you like it. You know? Yeah, you're right. That is definitely the easiest way to do it. Um, and snap. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna. <laughs> you know, I'm. I'm saying snap, but I'm not using snap. I'm just <laughs> saying it, but I'm not using. It. He says you should use it. Not that it, it's the snap is a good thing. I right? don't <laughs> agree with using snaps, but this is one way to get something accomplished really easily, and it will work. You know, yeah, very, very true. It doesn't have the complexities of of no having to know how to use a Docker container, right? The Docker container requires you to know how to use Docker in some form or fashion. Even if you just follow a a, a tutorial like I did, which w was fairly easy, you're still going to have to you know have some interest in learning how to do Docker. Uh, James left a super chat. He says, "Thank you for the topic. Next cloud will be installed after the email server." Awesome. Thank you for the super chat. Also, email servers, man. <laughs> the, Dude, don't, good luck, man. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't do it. Just, just don't do it. You'll, you'll, good luck. You'll be very sad uh, along your journey. Anyway, anyways, so that's it for this part of the pod. I think that we've said what we need to say. So we need to move on to Nuggies before Nate gets in there with a hatchet and says, "Matt, you're reaching an hour and a half. What are you doing?" Uh, especially with the claps in the middle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so the Nuggies of the Week is our last section that we have to do. It is an atrocious name for an awesome segment. That's just the way that it is, and that's what I have to say about it. So we use this section to talk about uh, tips, tricks, apps, things that we want to share with you guys. So, Drew, your Nuggie of the Week. So I we last week we talked about our must-haves, and in that podcast, I talked about GitHub Desktop, okay? And while I'm looking at the chat simultaneously someone and i wish i could remember who it was said something about lazy git okay and so i've installed and have been trying to use lazy git and i'm i'm kind of digging it 
Okay, if you're not familiar, Lazy Git is a terminal-based Git UI that simplifies the process of managing your Git repositories. It provides kind of an intuitive interface for common Git tasks. It's just staging and committing and viewing diffs and managing branches and so on. It's really easy to navigate and I'm kind of liking it a lot actually. And in fact, you know, since since the GitHub desktop is a Electron app and is not maybe, I mean, this is good. Okay, <laughs> I guess is my point. This is good. It's in the terminal. If you're not a terminal user, then maybe this isn't for you, but this is a terminal based uh, Git UI that I have been enjoying over the last week. Yeah, I've used Lazy Git before. It is really very good. I I tend to not use it and just use the Git commands in the terminal for yeah. everything. But if you you need a TUI, I agree with you. Uh, Git, 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 uh, Lazy Git is very good. All right. So my uh, first off, James, another super chat. Thank you for that. He said he says I ran an email server for many years, uh, so you have experience, so you, it won't be so bad for you. Uh, the server died on me and hadn't had a chance to set up an another one again. Uh, yeah, I've never actually. I, I've run a self-hosted email server exactly one time, and uh, that is. I have a tattoo on my shoulder that says "Never again." I don't actually have that, but I. I thought about it. It's just not. It's not something that I'm uh, at all good at. All right. So my nuggy of the week is a proprietary app, unfortunately, but and it's an iOS app, so it's not going to be something that everybody's interested in. But if you are a reader, I do recommend keeping track of your reading. It gives you some motivation towards things so you can keep track of everything that you read you know and it gives you stats and stuff like that so i've gone through many of these apps i've used a couple of them as nuggies i'm using one now called bookmory b-o-o-k-m-o-r-y and it is really good now the ui i don't think is as good as the last one that i used to use but it's good enough where i can kind of get it around it still it hasn't it also has an an obsession with really rounded corners i don't understand this ui paradigm that is everything like uh, once windows decided it was going to introduce rounded corners everyone decided that rounders rounded corners were really awesome and i don't have anything against rounded corners just tone down the radius just a bit please anyways th this app will allow you to keep track of everything that you read and it gives you stats based on your day and your year how many books you've read how long it took you to read them you can add tags to each of your books so you can see how many books you've read in certain categories and stuff if you properly tag things it gives you achievements and allows you to rate and leave reviews of your uh, books that you read which is really awesome you can also add it in a uh, like a two a to be read list so you can add a whole bunch of books that you have are going to plan to read and then when you read them you can just go in there change the status to being read and it will allow you to track them it has a, a timer on it so you can just press start reading and you go read and you go back press stop and it will you it tells you ask you how many pages you've read you type that in and it keeps a track of it so it's really good that way it has a lot of themes so if you want a different color you can do that and the best the reason why I switched to this was because I wanted something that allowed me to sync data across multiple devices because I've been messing around with Android a little bit. I've also been messing around with my iPad and I wanted to be able to synchronize data across different platforms. And the one that I was using before was very siloed in iOS. Even though it was on Android, they couldn't talk to each other. So this here synchronizes to Google Drive and just leaves a zip file and allows you to synchronize between them. So that was the reason why I switched and I, I've come to really actually like this one. So it's probably the one that I'll stick with. And it just allows me to have all my backups for that in place that I control, which is nice. So anyways, that's Bookmore and it is on iOS and Android. It does not have like a desktop app, which is disappointing. That'd be cool if it did like a, like a web app or something, but it doesn't anyway. So those are the nuggies of the week. So that's it for the Linux cast. If you want to watch us live, we do this every Tuesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. We're never on time, so I apologize for that. It's, it's, it's always Matt's fault. Can't help it. It's just, it, we, we might as well, the thing is, I, I'd say, we, we should just say it's 8.15, Drew, and, but the problem is, then I would show up at 8.30. Then it'll be 8.30 when we start. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's it's exactly what would happen. It, it's not even funny. It's it's just the truth. Uh, so we'll keep it at 8. Matt will show up at 8.15. I'll, I'll get better. Probably not. But anyways, if you want to watch us live, youtube.com slash Linuxcast every Tuesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, if you're in another time zone, you'll have to do the math on your own because I can't do math. That's against the rules. Uh, also, this won't help you if you're watching this 
after the fact. So if you're watching this on Saturday when the edited version goes up, but if you're watching live right now and you want to join in on the uh, lug, we do a lug every two weeks. Basically, the first, thir the second Thursday and the fourth Thursday of every month, one's in the morning, one's in the evening. The evening one is coming up this Thursday at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time. I don't know what the topic is yet because the, the polling is still going on, but we always have a fantastic time. There's usually about 15 to, I don't know, like 25 of us or so that show up and, and just talk it's always awesome i just took a look i sorry i just took a look at see who which one is leading the pack and so right now the owning your own media topic is leading the pack so if you are interested in any of these topics you might want to go vote yeah and uh change the dynamic if you <laughs> if you want <laughs> the the windows one last the last time bogart because this one the owning media one was at the top last time too and then the windows one kind of came up so yeah i always put a poll out for the the the, the topic because i don't want to have to you know choose it on my own all the time so this is much easier it's a democratic system and if the the topic bombs i can blame everybody else it's great <laughs> anyways uh we do the lug will be this thursday 8 15 p.m eastern time we'll share the link to the room uh, on Discord, and you can find it in other places as, as well, I'm sure. Uh, anyways, we have a fantastic time. If you're interested in doing that, go ahead and join in. If not, we'll also stream it on this YouTube channel, so you can uh, check it out there. So that is it for this one. If you want to get in contact with us, the easiest way is via email. That's email at the linuxcast.org, and you can contact all of us via that email address. I'll just forward it to whoever you need to. You can also find Mr. Drew. He's on the YouTube at youtube.com slash justaguylinux, and uh, he it makes awesome Awesome content, uh, awesome content, almost as good as shirt. <laughs> so you can find a whole bunch of content on there about Debian and window managers and Nextcloud and all sorts of stuff. You d should definitely go over there and check out his channel as well. Tyler, who's not here, does not get a shout out. So screw you, Tyler. Uh, <laughs> anyways, all of the rest of our contact information, including links to the Discord and our websites and all the other stuff is available at linuxcast.org slash contact. It's probably just easier to head on over there to the website. There you'll find all of our previous blog posts. There are no links right now to previous episodes in, in years past. I haven't got there yet. I'm still figuring out how to do that on Hugo. So eventually those things will come back. So that's it for this one. We'll see you guys next week where we'll talk about who knows what. I'm sure it'll be good. Anyways, we'll see you next time.